place and you know what they asked me? What was the gender you were born with? <laughs> I was like, same as the one I am right now, you know? And I thought to myself, I never would imagine a world where this would be a question. It's almost like we've lost ourselves so deeply in the forest. Now we're running around in a destructive sort of way to get out. That's what's happening. But I want to remind you as we push forward that Jesus wasn't an afterthought. Not an afterthought. God in heaven, the Father, didn't say, hey, I'm going to create a world and I'm going to create an Eden and I'm going to put man in that, in that Eden and it's going to be perfect. Him and me and then I'm gonna make her and him united and it's gonna be wonderful, there's no argument, there's gonna be no stress, there's none of this stuff, and you, they're gonna have perfect, they're gonna have perfect harmony with me and each other, and they're gonna have kids, and all the kids are gonna have perfect harmony together, and I'm gonna build the whole world from this model. And as you know, he literally goes away, as the story tells us, one day, one day, and man chooses to believe a lie that maybe, maybe, maybe God was holding out and there was something better if you could just get out from his grip. And when that happened, it, death entered in in an instant and, and they had to know it. They had to know it. All that harmony was drained in an instant. All that peace was drained in an instant. All that, uh, all that hope and, and love was drained. And, and instead of embracing, everyone went like this. They kind of like hunkered down. So I want to read for you a couple scriptures to remind you that this is not, this is not a, a plan B. Jesus has always been a plan A. For God says to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people on the earth will be blessed through your descendant. For your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out from the east to the west, and from the north to the south. All the people of all the earth, they will be blessed through you and your offspring. And I tell you the truth, Abraham, the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come and the obedience of the nations shall be his and whenever your days are over and you rest with your ancestors David I will raise up your offspring to succeed succeed you your own flesh and blood and I will establish his kingdom and he's the one who will build a house for me for you in my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever and today, God tells us through Christ, you are the heirs of these promises and of the covenant God made with your forefathers when he said, through your offsprings, all people of the earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. And you know, I've said this before, that's one of those terms where we really don't, we're like, oh, I'm not really wicked. You know, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I know I'm not perfect, but I, I'm not wicked. But when we realize what wicked means, it's hard for us not to say that this doesn't apply to me. You know what wicked means? It's the person who says, got nothing against God. God's okay in my book, but I'm sufficient in myself. I don't need him. I'm okay. I, I, I'm, I'm great with you being here. I, I, I don't mind people going to church, but as for me, you know, I'm good. I'm good. And you know what the truth is? I don't believe that that's true of a statement at all, but yet I'm tempted to live like it every day. So let's remember as we move forward, as we get close to the edge, let's look, let's look forward to when we will no longer celebrate his birth because he'll be in our midst. It's not a fairy tale, it's a promise. Let's stand up.
This is a little bit of an exercise along with the service. Up, down, up, down. I can remember when Sarah was at Canty Elementary, and she, um, we didn't know she had quite the beautiful voice that she has, but she always, God help us, was singing. Uh, no, not, it wasn't always, thank you, Lord. Uh, <laughs> I love her so much. I can harass my daughter like nobody else, and she knows it's my love language. Um, she's a special and unique. They're all special and unique. But here's, here, I want to make a point. So there was this teacher named Mr. Rivera. Mr. Rivera used to have a Christmas, um, a Christmas pageant or something. I don't know what it was. But every year we would go. And one of the nights they sang um, this song. And there was a bunch of kids up there. And you know the funny thing was? I could hear my daughter's voice amongst the 30 other kids. Like she was the only one singing. It was weird. I mean, I could hear it distinct. I'm like, that's her. And I think to myself, that's, that's I think, a little bit how, how eternity will be for those who are his elect. He will know each and every voice distinctly. But I want to say this. She sang this song, they sang this song, and then there was that line. And the earth uh, was pining in sin. And then he appeared, and the soul felt its worth. Have you ever been um, in a place where God, maybe someone's speaking about God, and God is using that person, and there's 500, maybe 50 or 100 people there, but you know God speaking directly to you. It's as if, it's as if he kind of does one of these things. Hey, you, don't look down. You, I'm, I'm talking to you. And I, that was one of those moments for me. And I know that it doesn't mean a whole lot for people, but I've always struggled with my soul being of worth. Still, to this day, I still struggle with it. And it was as if to say, hey, that thing you've longed for, you're not going to find it under any other way but in me. I'm the one who made your soul of great worth. You were made for me. And I remember I wept so hard. I had my coat over my head. And my wife always is very polite, and she never brings, you know, rats me out to the crowd. But... Uh, I remember that distinctly. I want you to remember that Christ came to give your soul worth. A worth so great that you could never discover it on your own. Never. As, as successful as you are, as moral as you are, as religious as you may possibly be, you'll never find the worth that only his love can give you. I want to read something. It's out of the book of Exodus. God speaking to Israel on the last night that they would be in captivity. He says, Moses, I want you to announce to the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of the 10th month of the first month, each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for sacrifice, one animal for each household. The animal that you must select must be a one-year-old male either a sheep or a goat with no defects. I want you to take care, special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of the first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter the lamb. You know what that means? That means spill all of its blood. That would have been a messy thing. And you know who he had to do it? The father had to do it in front of? The kids, the wife everyone it had to be just a traumatic thing and then he said this and they are to take that blood at twilight and they are to put it on the sides and the top of the door frames of the house where they would eat and on that night I will pass through the land of Egypt and I will strike down every firstborn son, every firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all of the gods of Egypt for I am the Lord, not they, I am the Lord. 
world full of little gods. There's probably a thousand little gods right in this room. He says, I'm the Lord. You think you're God, I'm God. And I'll prove it to you a thousand ways. Whether you deny it or not, I'll prove it. Put this blood on your doorpost and it will serve as a sign, marking the houses where you are staying. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. And he did this specifically, even to the little kids, so that when they would hear the wailing of judgment, and it did not touch their home, even the kids would say, it was that lamb that God used to protect us like an umbrella. It's like the angel of death would cross over the entire land and he'd go, gonna visit you, gonna visit you, gonna visit you. Hey, knock, knock, I'm here to take your life. But wait, there's the blood. I'll go to the next. Every kid that saw those lambs being slaughtered, they would know. Every mother, every father, everyone who had to see this, they would know. There'd be no question anymore. And this was a foretelling. Christ now has become the high priest over all the good things that have come. He's the one that has entered into the more perfect tabernacle in heaven, which was not made by human hands or not part of this created world, but with his own blood. He didn't come with the blood of goats or calves. He entered the most holy place once for all time and secured our redemption forever. Under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of young cows could cleanse people's body from impurity. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify the conscience from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. That is why he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and his people so that all who are called can receive the eternal inheritance that has been promised to them. For Christ died to set them free. Free from what? Free from being a little God. Free from saying, I, I don't need you. I'm okay. No offense, but I'm good. For you have given him dominion over the works of your hands, and you have put all things under his feet, all the sheep, all the oxen, all the beasts of the field, all the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the path of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name through all the earth. Let's stand and sing. Actually, if you want to sit down for this one, you can just sit and uh, close your eyes. And you're welcome to stand if you want to. But um, just listening to the words of this song, because they're so beautiful. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the soul? of man. Oh, you rescue the souls of man. Counselor, comforter, keeper, spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly
Wow. That's, um, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. In the Psalms, it says, Sacrifice and offering you have not delighted in, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you didn't require. But then I said, Behold, I have come. The scroll of the book, it is written of me, for I delight to do your will. Oh my God, your laws written within my heart. I told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I haven't restrained my lips, as you know. I have not hidden your deliverance in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation, and I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the gay congregation. Therefore, we must pay closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift from it. Every year, someone starts at the beginning of the year and disappears at the end. Three going on four years. This is a new crowd. Many have stuck, but many have left. You're never going to, never going to be able to, to have the fullness of God's hands on you if you neglect such a great salvation. Never. I'll never back away from telling you that. If you think it's just about showing up, you're in the wrong place. And it would be far better for you, more comforting for you to find another church. Because I'm never going to lie to you. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? For it was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard. While God also bore witness by signs and wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Now it is not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere. What is man that you're mindful of him? What's the son of man that you should care for him? For you made him a little lower than the angels, but you have crowned him with honor and glory, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, they left nothing outside of his control. At present, we do not see everything in subjected, is subjection to him, but we will see him for a little while made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death so that by the grace of God, he may taste death for everyone. That's a great promise. Let's worship.
just going to stand up now because we're, we're finishing. This is, um, this is my, uh, I don't want to overstep my bounds, but it's um, my new uh, daughter. We didn't adopt her, but she's marrying my son. And uh, I was watching something uh, over there. <laughs> Jack said a, a, a corny joke that nobody laughed at when they were getting ready and Courtney heard it and she laughed and she didn't laugh because she had to she laughed because she loved them that's what love does yeah? I'm an emotional guy and as quick to anger as I can become I can be that quick to cry, and I'm sorry for that. God's calling an audible. You ever want to watch a great movie at Christmas time? Get the, the conversion of Gavin Stone. Isn't that what it's called or something? Resurrection of Gavin, Resurrection of Gavin Stone. I'm not going to tell you the whole plot. But in the end, this guy's an actor, kind of a B actor, and his career's kind of sinking. He's not having a hard time getting back in because of uh, just a crazy lifestyle. And he's playing Jesus in this church, uh, Passion of the Christ. And there's this scene from the Bible where Jesus is standing and teaching and he's going from one city to the next and, and he's confronted by this guy. He's a rich, they call him a rich young ruler. You know what that means? He's successful. He's good looking, he's the apple of his mother's eye, and he's loved by the people around him. He's got it all. And he says, hey, good teacher. He goes, I've been listening to you for a little while, and uh, you know, I just wanna ask, how, how, how does a person get to heaven? How does he get eternal life? And uh, Jesus said, well, he goes, you know the law, right? He goes, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, everything within you. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's equal to the first. He goes, do these things. You'll live. And you know what the guy says? He goes, man, Jesus, that's the greatest news I could have ever heard. I've been doing this stuff since I was a little kid. I've been doing it great. And it says that Jesus looked at him and he loved him. 
He loved them. Not because, and you're going to find this out in a minute, not because he did what he said he was doing, but he was blind. He said he was doing all those things, and he never did them not one day in his life. He never loved the Lord God with all his heart, not ever, anyhow, at any time. And he never loved his neighbor as he loved himself. He loved God and he loved his neighbor, but just not the same as he loved himself. And he was completely blinded to it. And I don't know, I don't always have that grace when someone's deliberately telling me something that I could see is a lie. I usually want to kind of shake them, but not Jesus. He loved them. And he says, okay, that's great. He goes, one last thing though. He goes, uh, just give up everything you got and come, come follow me. We're going this way. And the guy goes, wow, I don't know if I can give all that stuff up. And this is where Gavin Stone went off script. <laughs> it's where he, he was testified to this guy, even though it was just the character. And he said, don't leave, don't leave. I'm begging you, don't walk away. I don't know what you think you're gonna go to or what you think you have in your bank account, but it ain't worth what I'm offering you. Don't go, you're gonna miss all this stuff. And I think to myself, that's what it is to know Christmas, is to know the blessing of the Lord in a way that it doesn't ever get stale. And every time you're tempted to think something else is more valuable because I do it every day. I do it all the time. I'm always, I'm like a dog on the street. I'm like, okay, I'm going down the street. And I'm like, squirrel. And he brings me back and he's like, don't, don't run after the squirrel. You're going to get hit by a car. You, you didn't do good when you were out on your own. Come back. I made a home for you. I got, I, I got it all planned. Just come back home. That's, that's what it is. We're going to do the candle now, right? All right, you guys have a candle, right? I want you to gather it. Boulevard, I want you to come up here. And uh, Abby, I want you to come over here. You know what Christmas does? It allows, sorry, again. You know what Christmas does, if you're doing it right? It allows you to take your eyes off of you. That's what blessedness is. I don't think less of myself, I think less about myself. And how do I do that? When God shows me that he's far better to look at than anything you could ever cast your eyes on. Think about that song, O Holy Night. The stars are brightly shining. It's as if God gathered all the stars in the universe to be presented, watching with an eager expectation of the birth of the one who is gonna make everything right. When Jesus came the first time, you know what he did? He put a timer on. And once the timer was started, no one's gonna stop it. The next thing that you're gonna hear is, is the trumpet bells. So today we're gonna to be just like the stars as we sing our last song. And one star is gonna give light to the next and to the next. So I want you to go out there and I want you to pass your light along to the person around you as we sing the last song together. Oh, come let us adore Oh, come let us adore
light's really little, it still defeats a room of darkness. The gospel is a light that is burning in the hearts of the elect. I know this message isn't for everybody. And some people are going to be like the rich young ruler. And they're going to say, the price, too great. But I beg you, don't, don't do that. To the ones who are walking with Christ now, don't look around. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't get your eyes caught on stuff because the world sparkles, man. I'm telling you. And you know what? It's going to tell you pretty, pretty lies. But one day, we're going to enter into eternity. And our righteousness, all the good morality, all the religion, it ain't enough we got to be covered. And when you do that, all the other stuff is put in. I want to tell you something. Miracles do happen. Two quick stories. First of all, my buddy Joe Patzel came here tonight. Man, made Joe a good guy. But I never thought he'd come. I'm going to be honest. I never even invited him. I'm going to tell you another story. A while back, I told you I felt, felt God wanted to do something powerful here, healing-wise. I mean legitimate healing. There's a woman here. She started coming, was invited by another brother, <clears throat> her and her husband, and uh, she has lupus. And her lupus has caused failure of her kidney. And she was diagnosed with blood clots, so this made all the, the things of... Uh, transfusion much more difficult she's got a lot of things that stand in her way so much so that doctors told her here the best doctors in Chicago said man you're looking at a one one percent to even find a kidney so somehow we prayed I do I remember the day I remember God telling I want you to pray I want you to pray together I want you to ask for my for my hand to heal and we did it and then she received a call from the Mayo Clinic. She never contacted them. They contacted her. They said, hey, we've been, we've been transferred your case by something on your, your web page. Someone's been reading you and kind of passed it along. And we feel like you might work with our, our, our program that we're doing here. I want you to come down for an evaluation. So she came down for an evaluation. And they were like, listen, we don't want to get your hopes up. This is the best hospital there is, but sometimes... The reality is that you're not going to get a good outcome. And she goes, I trust my God. I trust my God. I know, I know that he's here with me. You know what they did? They did this testing to her. And they said, you know, you were diagnosed with lupus, but we don't see any traces of lupus in your system. You know what you were told? That you have a blood clot, but we can't find one. You know, all those things that made you a one percenter, now you're a 50 percenter. And I think we have someone who came in today who has a kidney just for you. <laughs> hey, I can make this stuff up. Miracles happen every day. And to the, to the rich young ruler who thinks that he's leaving to go back to something that's better, you're wrong. You're wrong. Let's pray. Father God, you're amazing, you're awesome, you're better than even a fumbler like me could ever, ever think. To, to, to say, you don't, you don't call the greats, you call the less, the least, the ones that everybody goes, not, nah, not that one. Pass on, 
pick someone else. That's the ones you came for. Lord God, you never had to convince me that I was a sinner. Never. I knew it. I loved sin. And yet you still came for me. Lord God, you're here available for everybody. You don't push nobody away. If anybody in their heart says, man, I want, I want to come close. I don't even know what I'm coming close for. You say, come, come. I'll give you water that will satisfy you to your core. I just want to say thanks. Thanks for it all. Thanks for being a good God. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys have a wonderful day. Sit down, stand up, just kidding. Uh, yeah, blow out your candles. There we go, yeah. <laughs> we don't want a church fire. On fire for the Lord, not on fire physically. All right, uh, okay, thank you. She laughs at my jokes. Merry Christmas, you all have a good night.